Oxford graduation, the moment when years of hard work, sleepless nights for one reason or the other, and endless cups of coffee all boil down to one single day, where you get to finally wear the fanciest gown that makes you look just like a wizard, and a questionable hat that looks like it was designed by someone with a deep grudge against hats. Today we will be diving headfirst into the quirks, the traditions, and all the I cannot believe this is really happening moments of my graduation from the University of Oxford. So whether you are here for the fancy embroidered gowns, the nostalgic feels, or just to see if I managed to not trip on my way to get my degree, I'm not gonna spoil the fun here. Hope you enjoy because I definitely did. For those of you that do not know me, I am Joanna and I have just graduated with a mathematics degree from the University of Oxford. I have been on and off making videos on YouTube about my university experience, documenting everything and giving people advice, so I thought it would be so nice to come full circle and show you the bittersweet end of this chapter, this journey in my life. So here is how the day went. I had my graduation on a random Tuesday at the end of July. It was an afternoon ceremony which took place at the Sheldonian Theatre in Oxford, where students also have their matriculation in first year, so it's definitely a full circle moment. Even though the official thing didn't start until half past one, we had to be at our college right in the morning to get our gowns and gather around with our Eurogroup for one last time for photos, for brunch, and for speeches from various college officials. So obviously, because this is Oxford we are talking about, there is a certain ritual to get ready for an Oxford graduation. It all starts with your subfosc, which is a phrase that's as old as the institution itself, meaning dark brown in Latin. But in reality, it just means to put on your fanciest white shirt, black trousers or skirt, and of course your mortarboard, gown and tie or ribbon. The mortarboard is of course not to be worn until the very very end of the ceremony because who doesn't love a little bit of suspense? So all graduates make their way together to the theatre, separate from their parents and the people that accompany them. And it was so, so much fun to walk as a group throughout town and witness all the tourists taking out their phones to film us and take pics. It definitely makes you feel your 10 minutes of fame. And there was a moment when I thought about charging for autographs, but obviously that's not the kindest thing you can do, right? The ceremony itself is a mix of traditions, Latin, and of course, the very realization that you are about to be officially recognized for all of those years of hard work. To start with, imagine a Hogwarts sorting ceremony with a lot more Latin and a lot fewer house elves, which is definitely a bummer. But yeah, the whole thing is in Latin. Not gonna lie, I take pride in understanding a decent chunk of it simply by virtue of being Romanian. So thank you, my Romanian roots, you helped me a lot today when everyone was just nodding along and pretending to listen, I actually understood things. When it's time for your degree and your college to be called, they read out your name. After all names from your cohort have been called, two of the proctors, aka two of the three main characters of the ceremony, so the VIPs of the thing, walk along the aisles precisely like they're doing a fit check, so they can be stopped by the deans of degrees, from all colleges in case they object for someone graduating. So yeah, it's exactly like an objection at a wedding. So definitely no pressure at all. Of course, I don't think it's ever the case that someone's actually forbidden from graduating once they are in the room, but you never know, especially in a setting like that, the nerves will always be present. When everyone's happy and no one objects, you get up and together with your cohort, you follow your dean of degrees that pleads for your acceptance as an Oxford graduate. You then need to bow to all of the three proctors and swear by saying the Latin phrase do fidem that you will essentially respect the name of the university and will bring it value in the future, in your future careers, in your future endeavors. You then exit the theater and go to divinity schools, the building just outside the theater, to get your hood. This makes your gown even fancier and has colors that are specific to the degree that you have graduated. So in my case, this was black and gold and it looked really, really nice with the embroidered gown. For one last time, you finally re-enter the theater with your hood on the first time as a graduate and you bow some more obviously. You then need to wait for all of your professors to exit at which point obviously you bow some more while outside and then it's finally time as in any traditional ceremony to throw your motorboard, take pictures and inevitably ask yourself what's next? 
Oh yeah, and in my case, it was also very, very full of paparazzi everywhere because the royal family of Belgium was in attendance. I did think for a split second to pretend I was Romanian royalty so I could get some sick professional pictures from them, but figured that that wouldn't really work. But in all seriousness, this is the moment when it all starts to feel real. The four years of lectures, of tutorials, of all of the exams are finally behind me. Studying at Oxford has been a life-changing experience. It's not just the degree that I'm living with, it's the memories, the friendships, and a sense of belonging to a community that spans centuries. Of course, as with everything in life, there were several moments of doubt along the way, late nights questioning if I was, if I was really up for the challenge, and of struggling for problem sheets while also facing a severe imposter syndrome. But there were also so many moments of pure joy, the feeling of solving a particularly beautiful or difficult problem, late night chats in the college bar, and a sense of history that permeates every lecture hall and library. I have learned so much along the way here, and not just about functional analysis or stochastic modeling of biological processes, but also about myself. And I think this is the most important part, how to persevere, how to ask for help, how to appreciate every little moment in life in between the bigger milestones. Obviously, I am overwhelmed with gratitude for the experiences, the friendships and the lessons I have learned along the way. It's been a journey filled with ups and downs, twists and turns, but I wouldn't change a thing for the world. But if there's one thing that Oxford has taught me is that every ending is just the beginning for something new. And who knows, maybe I'll be back here someday, whether it's for a future degree or just to relieve those days of glory, but this time as a tourist. For now, I'm leaving Oxford for London, where I will start my new job as a quantitative developer at a big trading firm. I am beyond excited to start, as basically I'll be using my favorite area of maths, which is statistical machine learning and modeling, to help my company make smarter and faster decisions. Hopefully. Machine learning is all about teaching computers to learn from data and make predictions. A bit like giving them a mathematical crystal ball. For me, it's fascinating, it's challenging, and I absolutely love it. So here's the next chapter, combining maths, finance, and tech into one for one exciting career. Again, hopefully, we will see. That about wraps it up, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching and to everyone who's been a part of my journey, whether you are a friend, a family member, or just someone who just enjoys some good old university and math videos, I am beyond grateful for all of you. Hope you stay close for the next chapter in my life. Of course, if you enjoy this small bittersweet video, don't forget to like it, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you're curious about what's next for me, or if you want to see more content about my university experience, various Oxford traditions and my new role as a pawn developer, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything I post. And finally, if you want to see more of me, definitely go and check out my Instagram, it's right in the description, because I definitely am a lot, a lot more active there on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks again for being part of my special day, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Goodbye! I'm sick of daydreaming, I just want the feeling of you in my bed.